Good morning. This is Frank Taylor coming to you on April 9th, Thursday, with another episode of Nature in Your Backyard. This uh, episode series that I have now on a, a YouTube channel is uh, brought to you as a start by uh, coronavirus. Um, I started doing this to engage uh, students with the goal of engaging my students and families in going outside and discovering the outdoors and looking at things, finding things and asking questions. So, so far, I've just been following spring unfold. Uh, I started doing this on March 20th and every day I take a walk outside and I see what jumps out at me. Is it something flowering? Is, is it something budding? Is it an animal? Is it a plant? And I bring it to you. So today, um, is an offshoot of one of the things I've always said is like, you never know what you're going to find. And when I found the uh, adult eft uh, of yesterday's uh, Eastern Newt program, uh, in the bowl with the eft, I saw a damselfly larva. And I thought, oh man, this is so cool. How lucky can I be? So today, what I'm going to do is talk to you about damselflies and dragonflies. Now, I got to set the story on this. Most of you know, a dra you know, most of you recognize dragonflies in their terrestrial stage. And I'm going to uh, flip my camera and show you a quick picture from these. Uh, these uh, this is a picture from Audubon's insect guide. If you want to get a present for your kids uh, to help them engage them in the outdoors, and you're looking for great coronavirus at home things, this is the Audubon Society Field Guide to North American Insects and Spiders. It has great photographs like this, and it, it's a great guide to, to have, have in your house. So damselflies and dragonflies, this is the one you know. This is the dragonfly. It's got a pretty stout body. It's got two strong wings. And <clears throat> I want to tell you about the story about these, these adults. They are also called darners. And sometimes they're called a darning needle. And the reason they're called that is because when they fly, a lot of times they'll have this kind of flying motion like this, right? And that is the same if you have a needle and you're darning a sock and you're putting a thread through a sock with a needle, that's the same movement. So they're originally called darning needles. And legend said that uh, the darning needle um, dragonflies would come and sew your eyes shut at night. Lots of, lots of local legends. But these guys are amazing insects. They're probably one of the strongest flyers in the insect world. They have powerful wings, powerful wing muscles in their abdomen. They can fly forwards and backwards. They can hover in the air. Um, the adult dragonflies have big eyes and a movable head. So if you see a dragonfly land somewhere, you can watch him and he'll turn his head this way and turn his head this way. And he's got great big eyes. And it, you know, what has he got big eyes for? The better to catch it prey with. So dragonflies are these ultimate predators, great strong flyers big eyes, movable head, so that they can watch for um, things to eat. They got powerful jaws. They never bite. They don't land on people and bite. But if you caught one and held them in your hands, he would probably try to bite you to escape. But they never, ever bite people just to, uh, just to be annoying or in, in any kind of defensive mode, unless you're actually holding them in your hands. And they've got these really sharp, strong mouth parts because they catch insects in the air. The, the adult dragonflies have these long, long spindly legs, and they hold the legs out like this when they're flying through the air and intercept a, a prey item. They eat flying insects, and they will intercept them in the air and then take them apart with their powerful jaws. So they're I guess that's why they're called dragonflies, because they're, they're big and scary to the, in the insect world. Now, these guys are also very territorial. And I remember growing up, sitting on the edge of a lake uh, when fishing, and this one dragonfly would keep coming um, and land next to me. 
And if another uh, dragonfly came into the area, he would jump up and they would fight and buzz. And then that dragonfly would leave and then he would come back down and sit on a rock right next to me over and over again. And whenever an insect entered his territory, he'd jump off the rock, fly up and try to get him. So it's really cool. You know, we you normally don't think of insects having these like behaviors like, you know, they're just little insects, but they have these fascinating behaviors. So another thing I learned to do was I, if I took a rock and threw it up in his territory, he would jump off his rock, zoom out to it, and the last second it was like he identified that as a rock and would zoom back away and the rock would fall harmlessly in the water. So those are the uh, dragonflies. Now the other thing I'm going to show you are the damselflies. And here from my Audubon field guide is um, some photos of damselflies. Now, how are the damselflies different and how are they similar to the dragonflies? Well, first, look at how dragonflies hold the wings. When a dragonfly is at rest, it holds its wings in the pairs out to the sides, flat out. The damselfly at rest holds its wings folded together on its back. Um, both of them have big heads, movable heads with big eyes. Both of them have four wings. Both of them are strong flyers. Both of them um, are, are predators. But the damselfly is a little bit more delicate. And that's why we call it a damselfly. Because it's finer, it's a gentler flyer. It's a gentler predator than the dragonfly. So that's how you can tell them apart. And the damselflies, if you've ever been on a pond and you've been fishing, I don't know how many times I've had a damselfly land on my fishing line to, to take a rest or land on the sides of the boat. And they're the ones that have these iridescent, amazing iridescent blue and green colors and stuff. So we've all seen these adults of the damselflies and dragonflies flying around our ponds or lakes, uh, and we've interacted with them. But let's go and see their other life stage that you probably haven't seen. So let's me switch over. <coughs> and here is the larva of a dragonfly, and this is in the water. And this is a larva of a damselfly. And this, these guys are also in the water. So dragonflies and damselflies live <coughs> their half their life in their water. And you may have seen uh, adult dragonflies skimming across the surface, just touching the surface with their abdomen. Well, those are females laying eggs. And the dragonfly adults actually mate in the air um, and then the females at when they're ready to lay their eggs skim across the water skim across the surface of the water laying their eggs now how can you tell a damselfly larva from a, a dragonfly larva well notice that the dragonfly larva ha is much stouter and has a shorter abdomen notice the damselfly larva has long, long, thin abdomen, and it's got three tails on the tip, and they're almost, they almost look like little, little feather tips. Each has big eyes, each has big jaws, both are predators in the aquatic environment too. So these guys are predators both in the uh, aquatic stage and the terrestrial stage. So they live half their life in the water and they live half their life on land and uh, when they're ready to move to the land stage sometimes along piers and sticks and you'll find these guys um, you'll find an empty shell when this guy is ready to change into his adult stage he'll climb out of the water and a metamorphosis will take place underneath his skin and the back of his skin will crack and he'll climb out of the old skin with soft wings that are all wet and moist. And he'll have to climb a little higher 
and stretch those wings out and let them fill with, with uh, his body fluids and it'll pump them up and those wings will unfold just like a butterfly coming out of a chrysalis. Except he doesn't come out of a chrysalis. He comes out of this shell. And we'll find these and I'll show them to you later this summer. I'll walk around the pond and we'll find some of the shells of these guys. Um, and the damselflies will do the same thing. They'll climb out. Now, notice how the damselfly swims almost like a fish when, when he runs away. Did you see him just wiggle there? Um, I'm going to try to get this guy to run from me, and you'll see something pretty amazing. Come on, I need you to show off, big guy. Come on, show off for everybody. Well, dragonflies have a large opening in the base of their abdomen, and they can fill that with water, and they can squeeze their muscles really hard and move by jet propulsion. And I'm trying to get, he doesn't want to do it. He's hanging on to some algae here. He says, you're scaring me. Don't mess with me. Um, I'm not doing, I'm not showing off for anybody here today. I'm not showing you my jet propulsion. But notice you can tell uh, he's an insect, six legs, three body parts, and the uh, uh, damselfly larva is the same. He's got six legs and three body parts. So how do you find guys like this? Well, you can, uh, if you have a net, all you have to do, and all I did was I threw that net into the, the ground or the muddy bottom where there's some leaves and stuff. I pulled it up and then I put it in a bowl like this and I let the water settle and I looked to see what I could find. So um, nature in your backyard. You can go to a stream, you can go to a pond near your house, and I guarantee you're going to find aquatic insects all year round. And that's the other cool thing about aquatic insects. Most insects, we don't see them in the winter. They're not active in the winter here at all. They only come out in the summer. But aquatic insects live their life year round. Some of the dragonfly adults live for three years in the water. A lot of them, one year as a larva, is very, very typical. There's a, a, a species called Cordulogaster that's in the streams around here that get really, really big. They're like dragonfly larvae, like this big. And they live for three years in a stream before they emerge as adults. So what can you do? If you have a stream near your house and you don't have a net, take a bowl or a basin like I got here. Uh, something plastic, something to put water in. And you can go pick up rocks in fast-moving water in a stream and put them in your bowl or turn them over and look at them. And you're going to find some really, really cool aquatic insects uh, clinging on there. I have a collection of 120 different species of aquatic insects that I collected when I took advanced aquatic entomology at Virginia Tech. And I've always been fascinated by the aquatic insects. So this show is about uh, me leading you to find stuff yourself. And, and the other thing I don't want you to do, I, want, I don't want you to just say, learn from me. I want you to go look up books. I want you to find books like uh, the Audubon Field Guide to Wildlife. I want you to Google stuff. Hey, fact check me. Am I making this stuff up? Don't believe things you see on television. Fact check. Learn yourself. Make your own uh, decisions. So, uh, quick review again. These are the aquatic stages of damselflies and dragonflies. And damselflies tend to be uh, uh, more delicate, long, and thin, while uh, dragonflies tend in the aquatic stage tend to be. Uh, stout and they can move by jet propulsion and he was jetting around this morning but I don't see him jetting around now I wish I could show that to you but sometimes you know this is live video these guys don't do, do things as they're supposed to so today's episode was on dragon dragonflies and damselflies now you go look them up 
and go to your nearby pond or lake and pull up sticks or, pa or, or just reach in, put a pile of leaves and a bowl of water and let it sit for a minute and let things settle. And I guarantee you're going to find some things walking around. If you're in Radford, you go down to Wildwood Park, go into the stream where, where there's a current and pick up rocks and turn them over and you're going to find aquatic insects and there's lots and lots of different species which gives me lots of great ideas for shows coming up so this has been frank taylor bringing you nature in your backyard thanks for tuning in today um i love doing uh uh, uh live broadcasts like this because i see so many of my students and i uh becky reynolds uh just tuned in and watch and i wish i could call out people's names and stuff but I can't chew gum and walk at the same time. I, I'm lucky just to have the camera here and, and try to focus <laughs> and talk to you. But it really energizes me that you all are, are watching and tuning in. It's check out my past episodes. I'm cataloging them by different topics and stuff. So uh, we'll see what tomorrow brings. We'll see what shows up uh, this spring. And, and uh, I'll, uh, I'm going to try to do another live broadcast tomorrow at nine in the morning. Stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in today. We'll talk to you later.